Hello and welcome to K Stop Fuse's K pop podcast. Hey guys, as always, this is Jeff Benjamin and joined by the thinnest creature in the ocean <laughs> is Tina Zoo. Oh my god, he's totally saying that because five seconds ago I was saying how I feel really gross because I think I ate too much for lunch or ate it too quickly, so I feel like a beached whale. And I told her she doesn't look <laughs> like a beached whale. Hey guys, this is Tina. Hello. Uh, once again, welcome back to K-Stop for another yes. episode. Thanks for tuning in as always. Yes, yes, yes. As we always say, we love incorporating you guys into the show. Thank you so much as always for tuning in. You guys know all the different ways to uh, interact but just in case you don't, go ahead to Fuse.tv, leave us a comment on the on every episode, uh, leave us a rating on iTunes, it helps us, we love that. Or, as many people choose to do, they love you guys love leaving, uh, hitting us up on Twitter. We yes. love talking to you guys on Twitter. I am at Jeff underscore underscore Benjamin. And I am Hey underscore Tina with three A's. And, yeah, we and use the... Uh, Hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> case stop. I don't know where I was How going with that. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys as always. And, and you know, we wanted to, um, you know, like we do every week, kick it off with some reader comments. One in particular we really, really loved. Um, well, we got we got a request uh, from my, my dear friend Chris, um, who is at Chris J. Che on Twitter. And he wrote to both of us, Tina and I, and said, one, please have a morning segment for four minutes on K-Stop. And if you haven't heard the news, nah. it's true. Four minute announced that they would disband, um, you know, one of the, one of the, I would say most internationally known and loved like K-pop groups kind of, you I know. I refuse to <laughs> accept this. Tina, Tina said this earlier. I'm still in denial. It's, I it's. Need, I need some time. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, it's really, I guess, yeah, maybe I might be in denial a little bit too. I mean, I don't know. I really don't, I can't imagine them like not releasing more music, but I guess, yeah, it's like happening, which is sort of weird. But, um, and you know, yeah. Because the thing is, too, is that they now the the thing is they so and and part two of Chris's was um of Chris's question was any insight on why cave disbandments are so quiet? Why no closure with goodbye concerts slash singles? Um, I want to get to that in a moment, but you know, I I do think it's kind of interesting that that for a minute went. They were just like, we're disbanding. There wasn't like this sort of like you know, Wonder Girls went on hiatus. Um, mm -hmm. You know, granted, I guess all the members didn't maybe didn't want that brand to leave but you know Kara is even kind of been a tr like sort of a weird situation like they more or less seem like they're over but you know like I keep hearing right. like random little things popping up that like Kara is going to continue somehow I don't know I mean I, I guess um I don't know it's it's kind of weird that yeah they just flat out there or I guess it's not weird maybe it's for the best they're just like yeah it's not happening. Um, if you don't know the news, Hana announced that she was re-signing with Cube Entertainment, um, but the other four members were, it's on Shore. Um, that's, of course, Gayoon, Jiyoon, Jihoon, and Sohyun. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Tina, what, what, are your, what, are your, what are your favorite four-minute memories, four-minute songs, um, moments? Favorite four-minute memories? Well, back when I, when I was with MTVK, we actually mm. did a Cube United event. Right. And um, so all of the artists came through, and I was able to, like, kind of chill, like, <laughs> I guess – kind of backstage there was like a separate room for for the artists and um you. so i was able to chill and just kind of get to see who they were individually mm. you know not in front of the camera and yeah. you know it was just it was just cool to see that they were so down to earth and they're all yeah. so sweet and um mm -hmm. they're just like regular people and so that was i guess like a personal favorite memory of mine but who was there it was like beast um it was four beast four minute gina oh. um i th think that was because this was pre a pink oh. this was 09 and i think pre b2b no, 2011 2011 yeah oh. not 09 excuse me pre b2b yeah Whoa. b2b was not in existence Whoa. um well I, I they were trainees excuse me <laughs> um so yeah that was fun um but i guess in terms of when i really d i decided that i really really messed with them hard was mm -hmm. The release of their second mini album, uh, Hit Your Heart or uh, Huh. Uh, um, huh. and I thought that Great was point. where they really, really shined and yeah. um, just came out really hard. I mean, the first mini album, I it was still kind of iffy, I mm. liked a couple tracks, but 
it was like I wasn't totally sure because like that was the uh they their first single was like. What was it? The one that was it like was, um, uh, the one that was like kind of annoying at first. It was um oh my gosh um I literally just wrote about it the other day. It was hot issue. Hot issue. I was and everyone was like oh they're dressed like twenty one. They're yeah. twenty one wannabes. They got a lot with of the vibrant like that. they were. Do you remember that? Yeah, so they got a um, lot of them kind yeah, of. Yeah, but then after once hit your heart came out like there was no talk about 21 or like they really carved out their own identity. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I definitely really love that release. Yeah. And, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it always kind of felt like the group was kind of centered to be like Hannah's group, even though she wasn't the leader or anything. Right. I don't know. I just remember a lot of hype for her. Um, like, uh, like she's like at the beginning of that video all by herself, even the, yeah. the um, the, um, the hot issue video and, you know, it seemed it seemed like like it was like because she was in Wonder Girls, you remember, and then she like switched, you know, to Cube and this o- this new group or whatever. But I w- I always found that interesting that like yeah, she yeah, Hilna always had this kind of it factor to her. She really had yeah. a she has a com- very commanding presence, and um, although I would say my favorite member was always um, Ti Hung, the who is the leader. Um, really? She is my favorite. Um, I think she's very underrated, but she al- oh. she is also very sweet. She doesn't have that kind of like X factor that Hyuna uh-huh. has. And, you know, she is the old, like a lot of leaders, the, the position of leader either defaults to the oldest yeah. or the one with the most experience. Uh-huh. So G Dragon, he's not the oldest, Top right. is, but G Dragon has the most experience. Um. So, like, I. So my point is, like, she maybe doesn't have that kind of mm. draw that Hyuna has. So, like, people as- just assume that Hyuna was the leader or right. they just, like, paid more attention to her regardless if they knew she was a leader or not. So, huh. um, yeah. Because I, I am a little shocked to hear that she's your favorite. That she's my favorite. Not going to. I gonna like, I mean, I usually like either the more kind of, like, edgy R&B hip hop one. Mm, mm-hmm. Or like the more underrated one. Okay, okay, I feel so, that. So I don't like competition. Okay, I like to be like, you know, oh, like I'm one of the few who like likes this person or something. Okay, so. I always got to be contrarian. I see. <laughs> I always really, I was always a big fan of Gaiu, and I thought she I, always had a really like nice lot, yeah. voice. I love her She's voice. She's very talented. Yeah. At, and I think Ji Yoon was always so underrated too. You mm-hmm. know, because uh, I, and I think. Do you remember Volume Up from 2012? Mm-hmm. I think that, well, not only do I think that's probably their best single, one of like the best K-pop songs of all time, mm-hmm. to be honest. Because uh, I th- I, that was actually a song where I had this moment where I was like, man, that brass this genre. Yes, great, yeah. the saxophone, it, but it was a dance track and like mm-hmm. there's belting and Hun is doing this like, I don't even know if I'd call it rapping. It was sort of just like talking. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, like I just remember being like, man, this genre is, or this like this music is just on a whole different level. Right, but absolutely. you know, G and I remember was like even belting on that track too. I think, and she's like this really really good rapper. Um, yeah, I just loved so, and they did so many cool things. I thought I loved. I love, we know we both love the single that came out this year, Hate mm-hmm. with Skrillex. Well, I loved Crazy, Crazy from last yeah. year. That th- that's, I thought that song was sort of like that re-punch back that they really needed. Because yeah. they kind of, they were doing, you know, they had What's Your Name. and There was a little um, bit of a lull where I was like, there wasn't anything that was really resonating with me. Right. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of people were thinking that too, you know. They, but they were always doing quite well, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And, then that, and then they really came back hard. And I was like, man, like, this brand, like, the group is so strong. I always thought they had such strong releases. But, right. yeah, like, the volume up... Uh, I think that's what it was called, at least. It might have a different name. It might be called, like, another name. But the whatever album or or EP that had that track in it, there were so many good tracks on it. Like, the the Crazy EP had so many good tracks. Mm -hmm. Hate had some good tracks. Canvas, in particular. Just, they always had, like, really strong releases. So I was... I was like, man, who, like, who's gonna get these these songs now? You know, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, we don't really have those There's fierce, no, fierce like, groups. That's what I'm saying. Like, Cube doesn't no longer has like an edgy yeah. female uh, act now. Right. Like, A Pink's cutesy. They're not. And you know what? I think of I think A Pink or whatever company A Pink was. 
th- I think they've sort of split off. You know how they were called A Cube and they were like a oh, subsidiary. Right. I mean, they're still part of that family. I, right? I was reading that they like bought themselves out or something. Or they're like, not part of. I think they're s- like separated. I think. I think. I think. Oh. I, I I don't I don't want the fans to jump on us, <laughs> but I, I think they I think they bought themselves away from from Cube. So I don't even okay. think Cube has like a pink now, which is like interesting. Which would have given them like a you know that female presence as well but you know they have the new girl group that we were talking about clc but i haven't really heard much about them huh. and, and i think they're going you know the more cutesy route as well because they're young and you know i i more or less i'm wondering where where are the fierce girl groups where where like the where's gonna yeah. be like the, the no, that's crazy because after 21 i would say four minute mm. is right up there right for um you know just being really like badass yeah uh like i mean i think yeah a, a lot of people call that the girl crush thing in mm-hmm. in k-pop and i'm like man i don't I'm not really seeing that but yeah. you know i i do want to mention that the question that the second part of chris's comment that said like any insight on why K- k-pop disbandments are so quiet why no closure with goodbye concerts slash yeah, singles I, I i i think it's a little too awkward in my or mm-hmm. a little too you know i think and you know correct me if i'm wrong but i think there's a lot of it's a lot about image and putting things out you know it'd be one thing if yeah you know, I, I i think this was something that happened more in the past but now it's kind of like sad that groups are are, are ending and mm-hmm. it, it's no it sounded like cube was trying to make them stay and they're not right. so i think it's almost like a kind of a bad thing if they're yeah. like get ready we're about to break up yeah i don't think companies want like even though they say we're parting ways amicably mm. i don't think they're gonna put money behind yeah. a good, yeah. celebrating like leaving. money leaving the company right 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 right. like and why would you pay <laughs> yeah to like like they're already not renewing their contracts right. like it's it's a blow to the company yeah. they're not gonna pay and promote for some to like celebrate that yeah and i think in the past we did see those i think you know I, I, if i i remember like you know this was even before my time but i was reading about how like you know groups like hot or whatnot they i think they announced when they were ending and mm-hmm. there was a goodbye thing and whatnot yeah. but i think yeah, I think it's just now there's too many eyes on them and there's right. too many sort of, you know, it's it's not they're trying to get as long as possible, right. you know. So. I think it's also um, you have to case by it's a case by case thing where I just yeah. see why a particular member left mm, or mm-hmm, the group mm-hmm. is completely disbanding because I feel like they announce this. They I feel like they're waiting longer now to announce these. Yeah. So the, it's like, oh, their contracts, you know not being renewed and it's over like next week and it's like that's not a lot of prep time they're not gonna and if one member's leaving and there's ill feelings they're not gonna want to like yeah publicize that and and also like rehearse for a concert together that's awkward if there's ill feelings between members even if that's not like publicized yeah no i 100 percent agree and you know i i will say i was always I always thought that Four Minute had a really good bond they, from what yeah, I could tell. Right. They would, you know, even though Hana really was kind of the, you know, the one that took off as the more of the superstar, you mm-hmm. always saw her with the other members. She right. always kind of would, you know, right. sh- t- always hanging out with them, taking pictures. It really hey, seemed like they were close. She's still going to be there. So I guess like, yeah. well, we won't lose like at least that. that yeah. The aspect. solo. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. And maybe, you know, she'll release four minute esque songs, you know? They're right, right. So when she did like I mean, all her solo stuff, it's like <laughs> it's very yeah. it's not that far off from four minutes you're material, right, you're you know. Right. Okay. So if there's any type of comfort you can get. Yeah. <laughs> from I will say I've always enjoyed her solo releases. I have too. Last year's was a little not so much. My I taste. want more like blacklist esque stuff. Blacklist Ooh. Blacklist with Was that the with song Ellie. with um, Ellie? Yeah. yeah. Dun, that's on dun, my gym dun, playlist dun, i love it so dun, much and like dun, the dun, dun, dun. she performed it like you know live with her and it was just so freaking badass like i love and that well i i think i like both of their sounds mm, i think mm. they do sound a little similar yeah that kind of baby voice you know <laughs> but i mean i think they both like i think they just like complement each other well yeah so. i agree yeah there's good yeah. chemistry yeah well rest in peace for minutes we we yeah. won't forget you absolutely not yeah no. they're my roommate's favorite group he doesn't know k-pop that well but, but shout out to edward he yeah. loves them <laughs> That's dope. 
All right, and then and then yeah. Last but not least, we um, as always we have a a poll that we do of the top three releases that we talked about last week and who you guys thought was the best release. Last week we talked about EXID's L I E, You Kisses Stalker, and Heise and Dean's Shut Up and Groove. And what was your favorite of the week? Mine was Highs and Dean. Highs. Yes, yeah. My honestly, L I E like grew on me so much right. i can't stop listening a, to that one i'm now. gonna guess that they won they did okay it was a kind of a blowout 73 yeah, percent and then you kiss came in second with 23 percent of the vote okay. and highs and dean with four percent so All right, that's fair so there we go and there will be a poll of course at the end of this week's episode on fuse.tv of whom we are talking about as we get into music. Who yeah. is first on the list, Tina? Um, let's talk about why don't we go into Yunha Ooh, and her collaboration ball. with the rapper Cheetah from mm-hmm. Unpretty Rap Star mm-hmm. and Wonder Girl's very own Yenny, or by her solo or her stage name Hot Hot Felt. Yes. Believe Love me how some hot it. It's weird because I rarely say it. I only see it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And even spelled out, it's a little strange. It is. So, I agree. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah, and the song is called Get It with mm-hmm. a question mark, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to? Well, okay, so when I heard this collaboration was coming, you know, I, I love – yeah, I mean, you know, I love the more people the better, but I love when like you kind of have it automatically was giving me bang bang vibes like mm-hmm. Ariana Grande, Jesse J, yeah. Nicki, Nicki Minaj tease. Um, Sonically or like concept? Ju- just concept wise. Okay, okay. Being like, oh, here is like a badass right. like, you trio. Know, yeah. Yeah. Like, and you know, they're the, about to tell you what's up. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, they were looking edgy, you mm-hmm. know, and whatnot. And I was like expecting I something. I love Cheetah's look. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, I mean, I don't know too much about her, so like, she kind of, she she has very short hair, but like in in the video, like in certain from certain angles, she kind of looked like CL with the makeup. Because really? CL has very heavy eyeliner all the time, oh. like it's very very like um like cat eye extended. Yeah, you know, she's very into the cat or the winged winged um whatever. Um, so in certain angles, she gave me like kind of CL vibes a little bit. She was but. giving you CL vibes. Yeah. And you know, like I and, and I really liked the chanting. I really liked um I really like you know, there I guess maybe maybe I my expectations were like a little too high. I really wanted something to like smack me in the face yeah. and be like, Yeah. But yeah. you know, there was like the you know, this like really empowering chanting. There was some right. like expletives in there. Um, you know, I like was expecting for mercy, right? Yeah. Chant, yeah. I think they even like drop the F word at different times, right, you know, yeah. or there's something gets bleeped out or something. Right. Um, you know, but like I wanted them to really go there just like a right. pinch more. I totally agree. Like yeah. Cheetah's rap, like I felt like could have been like that much harder. Cause if mm-hmm. you remember her from, you know, Show Me the Money, she won it. Um I'm and, pretty rap star. Or sorry, what did I call it? <laughs> Show me. Show me. No, no, no. I they're like they're both up. no no. <laughs> I was like, wait, rap star. It, did, am I just thinking about the totally wrong show? <laughs> no, you're 100% right. No, no, no. I'm pretty rap star because she was like, she was fierce and kind of scary in it mm-hmm. at times. Like, I don't know if you if you like saw the clips and stuff, but I was like ready for her to just like plow yeah. it in and be like, bam. But, you right. know, it felt like she almost like was giving, you know, and maybe that's kind of cool. Like it was kind of like a little held back. Right. But, you know, um, so no fault or maybe anything. Maybe like, this is just an idea, but maybe she kind of was um giving off kind of like a a uh, vibe of like she is almost apathetic like even yeah. though like even though the lyrics are like oh you know like I, like she's giving like oh i'm going to mess you up or whatever yeah. but i think the overall <laughs> like concept was or the idea was that don't try to play me and try to stop lying mm. because I know you, you're not smart enough yeah. <laughs> to lie your way out of this because no matter what you do, I'm always a step ahead of you. Right. It's almost like I'm over it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. cause like, the whole thing is like, just give me. up, give up and beg for mercy. Cause <laughs> at the end I'm going to win. And maybe she yeah. was giving out that kind of like, uh, uh, I don't care. Yeah, she doesn't even need to put in that kind right. of right. Like I'm, she's so mm. over it that she's not even giving that much effort. It's not worth the effort. Uh, well, Tina, Maybe. always, always bringing no. a new perspective. <laughs> you always slay me with these analyses. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, no, I mean totally. Now that like you know, because I am thinking you know back even to the music video, she's kind of like you know like uh, drooping her head a little bit. Yeah. She does seem a little like over it, you yeah. know. And she's if she like, really dragging like like. 
like a little slower in her movement. Yeah. She's like, oh, you know, I'm just so whatever. Yeah. Hmm. And like even like like I like how uh, Yenny and um, I'm gonna keep saying Yenny because the other her stage yeah, name is too like difficult for me to say. It's tricky. Um, I agree. But yeah, she and Yunha, they were kind of like very kind of lack of des- lack of des- what's the word? Lackadaisical. Lackadaisical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, they were almost kind of like, oh, what am I doing? I'm so like bored. I've been. I'm, I'm tired of thinking about this. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the styling? I mean, I was here for it. I, I liked it. I thought everyone looked good yeah. um you know again he was looking a little cray but i was <laughs> into it you know i think what what she have like like you know like, like sparkles on her eyes yeah and, and like kind of like purplish yeah, purple to her hair, hair purple right. gray i was into um, it um yeah they look like they were just like in cahoots like they're about they're planning like yeah. something i know they're gonna kick everyone's ass yeah. so i'm here for it i like i thought they looked good together just yeah. like it didn't feel forced aesthetically yeah when they were all sitting together on this you know they they look like you know they they look good the three yeah. of them yeah yeah i'm always here for like you know like a bunch of like badasses like coming together for like something cool like that yeah. cuz i think it's tough to like get all these different companies on board and whatnot and no mm-hmm. it's so cool to see that so right yeah so here for it yeah no it's interesting cuz yunha's so like she's so eclectic to me because mm. like i she wasn't really on my radar in her early years cuz she was in japan first yeah. and then she was more of a rock kind right. of I was gonna performer say. Mm-hmm. And then, like, she kind of flew onto everyone's radar more on, like, not mainstream, because Epic High was never, like, super, super mainstream. Right. But on Pieces Part 1, that album, yeah. she, she did Umbrella. Right. And she was, it was much more soft, kind of, like, yeah. mellow sound um. and kind of ballad But, um, yeah, and, like, it was always very soft. So it was interesting to see her do this. this yeah. something that was, you know, definitely edgier and so different from you know umbrella which is obviously from years ago but yeah. yeah like it's cool that she can you know do different different sounds and different looks yeah i'm I'm a fan i'm a fan absolutely I'm into it yeah go girls i thought it was i thought it was a very very interesting release yeah. and unexpected oh yeah no so. exactly i'm all for like you know new sides and whatnot absolutely, so yeah there you go girls killing it yeah. let us know what you guys think of yuna Hot felt and <laughs> cheetah. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I would love to see more of these. Like, I mean, personally, you know, just more of these. Like, I think there was this really cool collaboration with like a like four unpretty. Um, I honestly can't remember their unpretty. names. There were four unpretty rap star uh-huh. like contestants or four female rappers or okay. something. And they came together for this track. And I remember really loving that concept and whatnot. Yeah. I'm just all for it. I want to see more. Oh, of I need those. to look that up. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> well I, I can't I honestly can't remember who it was. It might have maybe. I don't even want to say it. But yeah, yeah. we'll find it. Okay. Check it out. and Because well, you, you can find this song. You can find all the songs we talk about in, uh, in our YouTube playlist on yeah. Fuse.tv. Who's next on our music next, list? Next, let's, well, um, it's been a few days since this release. But one of the biggest one of the acts biggest. in yes. the world, EXO. <laughs> EXO. Returned with... Um, Monster and Lucky One from their third studio album, correct? Third studio Ex- album. Exact. Exact. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, is this the first album um, without all, all 12 members? Or first album with nine members? Or was Chris on the last album? So. I don't know my so, timeline very well. <laughs> I just know three of them are not in the group. Time to school you, Tina. Okay. okay. So, um, so Overdose happened in 2012, if you mm-hmm. remember. No, sorry. 2013. 30. Okay. Yep. 2014, actually. <laughs> I think. Oh my gosh. Now I, I thought I really. Knew I just this. keep forgetting that they've actually been around for so long. Right. No, uh, no, no. That's but the I thing was never like. They always a felt follower of theirs. So. Right. They always felt like so. They still feel like quite young to me. Right. But right. um. But no, 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 no. Um. So to get it all back together. So yeah, overdose happened in 2014, and right after overdose is when they started having the member like leaving and stuff so like okay. that's when chris left um who you mentioned and then yeah so now they're and i think with the last release um that's when um that's when they also lost a met like there were the last promotions and then another member left so um if we want to do the quick timeline 
yeah, that's kind of like what happened. Like Chris Fell came right after of 2014, and then um, Luhan came right. like just a couple months later. Um, and then Tao right now is still fighting. Yeah, that I whole think they're lawsuit, all right? fighting to be honest. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of like still happening. But then yeah, August 24, August 2015, mm-hmm. a year later, after they released, I think it was yeah, it was the Call Me Maybe song, okay. um, and. Um, yeah, then Tao followed the right. suit. So that was three out of the 12 members are now right. currently fighting. Right. You know, because I don't think they can just totally nullify a contract like that. You know, I think okay. there does need to be some discussions to be had. So I, right. this is all sort of Right. It's interesting how it's like the same law firm defending all of them. Yeah, like, it's very... You're getting a lot of business out of this group. There's a lot going on there. But, um, but yeah, no, this is their first. So this is kind of their first as the current nine situation. Right, that's what I was with, asking. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Long-winded answer <laughs> to get, and lots of history to give you. Yeah, this is like their sort of static nine, at least this nine. This is the nine that like toured um, America last year, although Lay wasn't part of the tour, which was sad because I, I love Lay. But, um, but yeah, this is the third Pulling the album exact with two singles, yes. and yeah, we got Lucky One and Monster. And now I gotta ask you, which one do you like more? I like Monster more. Monster seems to be the um, fave. Yeah, I haven't actually heard too much uh, reaction to Lucky One, at least on oh, really? my, my timeline. I guess people aren't talking. I don't know. Maybe I haven't looked for it, but <laughs> I actually like don't like Lucky One at all. Whoa! Like I really, really don't like it. Um, really? There was just like. I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I didn't like the video. I didn't like the song. Uh, I, the it just sounded so generic to me. And really? it just sounded like it was going on forever. <laughs> See, I, okay, so so I was kind of seeing, I was looking at comments too. And, I, and you know, some people were saying, oh, is, is XO just going to be this group that puts out some, like, funk single, you know, yeah. you know feel good funk single, that's going to be their thing or whatever. Because I was like, oh, I guess, like, You know, I thought Call Me Maybe and Love Me Right were really, really good singles. That was Mm -hmm. their singles from last summer. And, you know, thinking back on it, okay, those were very feel good and a little funk inspired. I thought incredible pop songs, though. And Love or Not um, Lucky One, I think is just, you know, it's in that same vein. It's in this sort of feel good funk style. But I, I thought. You know, it's not, it's certainly not my favorite. I like Monster more as well, but mm-hmm. I thought it was cool. Like, there was some disco elements, but then, like, you know, which is a little played out now, but then they, like, incorporated, like, this flute into the chorus. And I'm like, damn, like, this is right. great. I love, I gotta say, I love, love, love the choruses of both these two singles. Like, oh, at okay. first, I, I, like, it reminds me why SM is, like, the pop powerhouse they mm-hmm. are, because, like, these choruses are just so good. <laughs> like, I don't know. That flute in the in the in the lucky one chorus it just like blows my mind. I'm right. Like, yes, this is what I wanted. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Tina just, as a Tina sighs I mean, like, even heavily. Monster I didn't love. I really? think like it was a little I think everything I think EXO just never really resonated with mm-hmm. me from the get go because their sound and look in certain respects remind me a lot of dbsk or if you want to say tvxq however um, you are domashinki however you want to say it <laughs> yeah. and and i was never really a fan of theirs um you weren't a tvxq no, fan no 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 oh no, no. Oh, no. um when it comes to like kind of, i don't really like that kind of like pop dance sm sound uh-huh. like that's why i like shiny when they first came out because mm, they debuted with like an r&b, R&B. sound and because I, I just don't like songs where i can't just see myself listening to anywhere like i wouldn't listen to this on my commute to work i really really? i wouldn't like i wouldn't listen to it while i'm drinking a glass of wine (laughs) i can't really dance to it i'm Mm. just like i don't know how i would listen to these songs okay i see what you're saying if that makes any sense no 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 i totally do because and i do think they really are going for like hit the hearts of like young fans yeah. and they really want to like make you feel something right. but that's not so accessible to a lot of people I would yeah. argue, you know and like you know I think you know when they're saying you can call me monster I think a lot of fans will be like oh my gosh like <laughs> you can you know fanning myself right. right now but I think that's tougher to get into if you're not in that intense sort right. of fandom right, right. Um, or in that 
a fan in that kind of way. So I can, I, I very much understand where you're coming from. I will say I thought the video was cool. I the thought, monster video. I thought the choreography was dope. The choreography was um, on point. Yeah. So I, I, I just, that. I think the overall just kind of like aesthetic of that video, uh -huh. I, I liked more. So. so that sold you. Yeah. So, mm. but you, you like the song better? For well, okay. Monster, so, here, well, or? I mean, yeah, you, you know, I'm like a pop fan. I, mm -hmm. lo I, lo I mean, I love pop music, but. Yeah, and and I think honestly, like these song these songs are really really good to me. I think, you know, they did a really good job at making really good pop music. I will say at first, Monster was at first sounding to me like, man, this is this really sounds like all the other hip hop boy bands that are like mm -hmm. debuting right now. But then when it got to the chorus, I was like, oh, this is why it's yeah. SM. This is why it's XO because this chorus is just. I love like the layering of vocals and like how it kind of just it feels very uplifting. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I love in pop music. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I I I know I was like raving before and I'm gonna start raving again. But no, yeah. like, <laughs> like I'm I don't glad know. one of us like. <laughs> Well, here's the thing is that like EXO for me has always been a very, very much a singles group. Like I remember mm -hmm. um, the Exodus album from last year. I, I, and it was kind of interesting because, you know, I, I had, was doing some album reviews for like Billboard at the time. And I gave, you know, I remember giving Boa's album like four stars because that was a really good album. SM like, you know, blasted that out, mm -hmm. you know, on the PR, on the media play. Right. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe FX I gave like a, a really good rating to. But then the XO album, I was like this in my opinion this album is not as a whole not very good i think i maybe gave it two like and a, a half three. or three Ooh. or something Ooh, harsh because it was the truth and yeah. and i remember they did not blast the right. one so that was kind of interesting <laughs> um because i i and you not know, all coverage is good coverage <laughs> apparently i mean it was, it's not like horrible it's not like right. they failed you right. know three and a half isn't awful yeah but um no, I think, you know, that like they really are strong in their singles, but you know, the albums. So I was always, a, I was really excited to hear these singles and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm glad that they delivered on that um, side because yeah. I think they've always done quite well. And you know, that there were some cool, there were some cool songs. I think this is probably their strongest album altogether. Um, there's like a cool song. It's called artificial love. It's a little like housey dancey, um, SM seems to be like on a, on a house kick at the yeah. moment with Luna and whatnot. I think so so too. that was cool to see. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I just, I don't know where these will sort of stand in sort of EXO's, you know, career or anything. It doesn't feel right. like they're, they're reinterpreting the wheel or anything or like, you know, doing a huge artistic shift, but I, I, I'm, they're great pop songs. Right. Yeah. And I feel like they're, <laughs> They're great performers, and it's yeah, like yeah. But they, the live comebacks weren't as as nice as I thought they'd be. They weren't they as weren't. together. These guys are probably so tired. Let's be honest, right. and probably completely overworked. But you know, the choreography was amazing in the yeah. video, and I was like, oh, they're back. And then like live, I was like, mm, this isn't, yeah, like, this isn't really a this isn't really a that's a bummer. I know. So um, you know what? I, I I'm interested to see. I guess sales wise, how they do because yeah. they keep breaking records and yeah, you know, right. The I sales like were on, incredible. Numbers wise, they always deliver on that end. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see yeah. final sales or first week or whatever. Exactly. So XO, you know. We know you guys are listening to that one, so definitely let us know what right. you guys thought of that. Are you are you more Team Tina on this release or more Team Jeff on this release? Are you dying over here like oh. me, or or I'm not dying, but um, are you are you more Team Tina? Or are Tina? you eager You're... to move on to the next <laughs> artist on the list? Which apparently she is. So yeah. let us know what you guys think. Hashtag K Stop. Tina, who's next? Next is veteran Hui Sung, featuring L E of. AXID yeah. with his new single uh, Hold Over, which is an interesting translation. Hmm. Um, but that's the English title for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think this is his first song in like a couple years. Yeah. Um, I, I he has like an EP from, from like 2014 or something. And like he's very much known as um, a ballad singer, you know, right. big vocals. And he started out with YG and um, mm. he is considered, you know, one of those one of those old YG heads. But he left and like I want to say like, oof, like around this time Big Bang kind of got big. So way mm. long ago that he right. left, left YG. Um, and he hopped around um, labels for a bit. And then he had to serve mandatory military service right. oh. and came back. Duh. And um, so, yeah, he's like gone through a lot in his career. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but he's very much respected throughout the industry. But I think he, he's someone who just like I wouldn't say he's like like a list kind of like mm-hmm. drawing huge huge crowds and stuff. Right. But like pe- like everybody pretty much is aware, you know, Hui Sung. Yeah, major no, talent, so respected. Very much like, respected. Lots of uh, collaborations, like always like a big, and he, isn't he the one who's kind of credited for like kind of bringing Ailey to the scene? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, definitely, definitely dude knows music. Right, Okay, absolutely. if you don't know him, get into him. Because right. Because it's worth it. Right, absolutely. <laughs> um. So, yeah, like, and this is, so this song is very, very interesting. He's really taking up the, f- Kind of like the funk dance, yeah. And because before, like I said, he's very, very much ballad. At at certain times, I'm like, this is a little too intense for me. <laughs> um, right. You know, a little dark, emotional. And this one's just fun. It's yeah. like the video shows him playing three different characters in yeah. a club. One's like this dorky dude who's like just trying to like get a girl's attention. One's like this suave painter who's like painting like lips onto girls' boobs and whatever. <laughs> right. And, like, the third persona or character, I think, is this guy who's just sitting on a couch surrounded by females. Um, right. Yeah, and, like, Did, this, the and song was just very different from what you would normally hear from him. And I thought it was really, really fun. And I liked it. Yeah, and, and, you know, I thought it was a cool – well, first off, you saw the DHL shirt, right? It's yes, back. Yes, I was going to – I was gonna bring. Them. Oh, you were. <laughs> See, we're no, on the no, same. No, like we're on that same. I just I had to mention that yeah, because we talked totally. about how we think it's so. It's like, so funny because just uh, <laughs> two weeks ago, right? We talked yeah, about how... Luna's free free somebody. Yeah. And she was wearing the DHL shirt in right. the video, and now Lee Sung's he wearing it. There and we, uh, Jeff was saying how <laughs> that's like a really big thing now. That shirt. Yep. There it is. But anyway. um, yeah. But um, I just What'd had to bring that up. What did you think of the concept? Yeah. No, I mean, I thought it was cool. I mean, I think even by teaming up with someone like Ellie, who, like, you know, she's done. It's, it's Oh, you even mentioned, like, Hana collaboration. Mm-hmm. She did something with Tiara. Like, she's always been very much in, like, that pop world or, like, some, t- some more like, of the more, like, aggressive yeah. hip-hop pop world. Right. You know, always something, like, fierce. And then here she is kind of, like, doing something, in my opinion, quite unexpected with, like, totally. a more of a, a crooner sort of thing. I think that's almost, like, representative in and of itself, you know, right. that, like... And and I think the video plays along with that too. Is like it's kind, it's a little racy, like mm-hmm. it's a little like you know it's like I, I I love that one moment. Even though I'm like this could get pervy, but it didn't ever get pervy. Where he's like skateboarding through like the ladies' lay under the ladies' legs oh, or yeah. whatever, <laughs> and I'm like right. okay, but like you know it never got to you know there's a lot of gratuitous cleavage shots and whatnot right. but <laughs> yeah there it is you know so i i was i'm certainly like a fan i'm all for yeah someone like trying something new especially like at this point in his career like he's certainly earned the right to right. try something new you know and still it has those elements still smooth still like easy enjoyable right. listenable you know or easy he's, listening yeah I-, I like that he's just showing a bit more like vibrancy yeah. and color to his, a to his look. Character. Um, I will say I was disappointed that Ellie wasn't actually in the video. Oh yeah, me too. Because that girl's like, she looks good. Like she totally <laughs> could have just been one of the girls in the club and just suddenly it's just like, yeah. kind of like, like whooshed in and like delivered her part and then kind of like shimmy back into the dance. Well, I don't know. Like they could have made it work. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Maybe she wasn't available, but I you would have know, loved to yeah. see that too. No, exactly. But, like it, it didn't feel like, jarring or awkward i think it like i think it worked with the sound yeah. with the song um and like it was interesting like his hair was interesting because oh, i've yeah. never He's seen blonde. him that blonde or like ever blonde i think right he was always I like a remember, yeah. you know brown to dark <laughs> medium brown to dark brown shade or whatever yeah. no i'm uh, totally ex- and, and that's the thing too is that yeah i'm so here for like anyone like changing their yeah. like look a little bit or something and this is is this just like a one-off single or like is it like sort I of indication think of things so to come? i don't i didn't see anything about an about like a ep or anything yeah that's what i saw too i i haven't seen much either so yeah i hope it's kind of like an indication of more more experimentation more things to come so we'll have to see right. but um but yeah no so into it hui sung Song, yes. I pronounce it right? Yes. Hui okay. Song. So who's your favorite release of the week? Um that's tough. Who are you gonna vote I for? I would say um 
probably Hui Songs. Mm. I'm trying to think like I like what he's doing. Yeah. But I'm also trying to think which song would I actually listen to? Yeah, because I've made a big hoopla about it for like Monster <laughs> and, you know, EXO songs. I'm like, I would never listen to this. So, but um, yeah, I think I would probably find more like, you know, opportunity mm. to replay um, Hold Over. Me too. Pro- I mean, I'm, I've already played like the shit out, played the shit out of EXO singles. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll probably be my vote initially. Right. But who knows? Maybe, maybe in the end, Hui Sung would, would, would ultimately win me over. When you never know. <laughs> well, y'all so, got to let us know. Yes, let the us poll. know in the poll. That's on Fuse.TV. Yes. Let's get ourselves through the charts really quickly. Right. Oh, my gosh. I almost fell in my chair. Let's see if anything's changed at in the top couple spots. At number five, I mentioned this track actually a little bit earlier. It's EXO's Artificial Love, oh, which I guess that. is the standout or which one of the standouts. Is, you know, well received by not just Jeff Benjamin. <laughs> not, no, it's not just a Jeff Benjamin favorite. <laughs> number four, BTS's Fire. Oh, my God. Fire. I actually haven't listened to that song in like a few weeks. I got to go back and listen to it again. Number three, BTS Save Me. I had a revelation about BTS's Save Me. It kind of sounds like Justin Bieber's What Do You Mean? With Which, the, with the, oh, Save Me. Um, with the clicking, with the time oh, clicking. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Food totally for thought. Yeah. Food for thought. Just Absolutely. just a little revelation over the weekend. Number two, EXO with Lucky One. Oh, and I'm okay. sure you can guess what number one is. None other than You Can Come In On Style <laughs> by EXO. <laughs> So it's literally a locked out top five of just, you know, I would say probably, two, you know, two of the biggest boy bands right, in K-pop, yeah. BTS and XO. And if you look at the top 10, it's basically all XO. Right. Shout out to I Tiffany. I guess I, I should have expected that. Shout out to Tiffany with Heartbreak Hotel at number 10. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Nice. Shout out to Heartbreak Hotel. She, like, she looked beautiful. Oh, yeah. She sounded great, too. Quick teaser. Quick tea. Talked to Tiffany actually last night on the oh, phone. That's right. We got an interview coming to Fuse TV very soon. Uh, an awesome Q and A. She kind of g- gave a whole recap on her whole solo career, what happened this time, where it's coming. Definitely look forward to. It. I'm so excited to yeah, share that's share that with you guys. Good one. Yeah, it's really good. And then, and um, last but not least, as we get into our deep cut section, um, this is something that I actually, um, you know, oh, it's 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 so wounds are quite fresh in America at least um, and this is something that I was inspired to write about uh, for Fuse uh, yesterday um, just you know there over the weekend it was a tough weekend I mean in the world it was, especially in America there were you know these shootings you know that not only took the life of Christina Grimmie who you know it was a up and coming singer in America but then the next day that was on Friday night and then Saturday night um, there was like a shooting at uh, an Orlando gay nightclub uh so, uh, about 50 people have been killed 50 plus people have been injured the largest um like mass, mass shootings, shooting yeah. you know since september 11th it's humongous it's huge it's heartbreaking um all these things you know that uh, i still totally don't have the words like describe and you know whatnot um so bear with me but you know something that I thought was really really interesting was that I or I was very happy at first to see I I noticed so kind of how this so I wrote this story it's called why are some k-pop stars deleting their post about Orlando and this was looking at k-pop stars who lent sort of their support or you know there's a hashtag going around pray for Orlando um, and it was talking about or it was saying some stars wrote pray for Orlando and you know depending on so so I guess I'll just go through the timeline so mm-hmm. I first noticed G Dragon and he posted in my opinion what was really awesome a heart with a it was a heart with a black background and a rainbow it was rainbow colored um rainbow colored heart which a lot of people know to represent you know the LGBTQ community mm-hmm. um Joe Kwan of 2AM posted a someone holding a rainbow flag, which is another symbol of the LGBTQ right. community. Um, uh, the Korea Herald noted that Yubin of Wonder Girls posted also like a rainbow colored heart. Um, and all three of those people ended up taking down that post. So that's the first part of this. The second part of this is that there was the likes of Jay Park, um, Pino of... 
B2B, Amber of FX, um, Brian of uh, Flight to the Sky, and they all posted Pray for Orlando's too, but had no imagery with rainbows or, or you could basically say gay iconography because the sort of the closest thing we even got to any sort of mention of maybe that gay people were involved was Brian, including the hashtag God loves us all in his Instagram post. Um, now G dragon followed up on Instagram, had a picture that said like, um, it was a journal that said more love on it. And then like, um, it was a journal, sorry. It's a journal that had the words less hate on it, and he captioned the post with more love. Joe Kwan also followed up with a new photo that was just a black and white photo that read more love. Yubin didn't post anything at, uh, to replace it. And then some fans have noticed today that G-Dragon posted um, some figurines of the Big Bang right, members, yeah. and the caption was like a rainbow, rainbow heart. Hearts. Yeah. Now, so... So we, we we reached out to YG, reached out to JYP, you know, trying to get a little insight. Uh, we Some clarity. Haven't, haven't heard this. anything, to yeah. be honest. Um, I honestly don't know if I expect to hear anything. Um, and, like, here's the thing is that, like, I know there's a lot of cultural things going on. You know, right. gay rights are, are, are something in a very different place in a place like South Korea than they are in, like, America or other mm -hmm. parts of the world. Um, but I, I gotta say, I, I was so disappointed to see the, uh, the post, the post taken down, right. you know, because, and, and a lot of fans, you know, I, I've been talking to a lot of you guys on Twitter about it and being like, why did Joe Kwan and G Dragon and you've been, you know, take them down. And they were saying, you know, the comment section was just like a mess and fans were, you know, spewing homophobia and hate and all these things. And, and I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, on one hand, don't you? I don't know. I, I guess so. On one hand, you could say they took it down because of the comment section. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying that you know the agencies wanted them to take them down. They thought it might be too controversial. But I mean, my question is sort of like, when is ever too controversial to say like, hey, we're thinking right. of dead people? <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I'm having a really tough time, sort of like wrapping your head around. Yeah. All this. Yeah. I think. Um. Which is, and again, I'm not judging anything. I, I hope this doesn't come off as yeah, judgy. No, We're no, simply no. asking questions. It's interesting because I'm not sure how worldwide that the rainbow uh, flag mm. and gay iconography is. Sure. So I don't know if, first I want to, I'm wondering if you being probably new, I don't know. But I don't know if, did all three of them realize that that was, repar that this issue stemmed from homophobia and that the flag represents gay pride and th no that's a legitimate question because maybe th and again this is not excusing anything or uh -huh. this is i'm just wondering maybe one if not more than one of them posted it because they saw that that was what a lot of people were mm. posting and then it wasn't until after the fact that they didn't want to seem like they were like supporting mm. homosexuality. Interesting. So they decided to take that's one that's one like scenario. Kind of like how a yellow ribbon might represent like a mm -hmm. fallen soldier or something right. like that. Like this was just the colors people right, chose. Right, right, right. So maybe they didn't realize that and maybe it, there could also be personal insecurity thinking that mm. they don't want anyone of their fans to think that because they're posting this that they're like signing off on you know something that they maybe are personally against sure yeah i mean well here's the thing too is that like i'm gonna play devil's advocate because it was also the um i guess you'd call it like korea's pride festival this weekend and oh, it was okay. like the yeah, i think I it's called that. the queer soul festival or souls queer festival or something like that mm -hmm. and i was looking and you know i did see a lot of you did see rainbow okay. flags you know so okay. if anything in korea i think more or less it they should. Is okay. The thing okay. there, but I, I, I could see that as an argument, um, or not as an argument, as a. I'm I'm trying thing. to see where maybe they no, were no no no, and and it's good, but here here's here, and again I'm gonna play devil's advocate too. Is like, you know, of if if. If Cho Kwan, for example, was trying to show, you know, a heart is a heart. I, I get the heart. They're trying to show like love, you know, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and but if Joe Kwan had posted a flag with any other colors on it, it wouldn't 
makes sense to say that with Prey Orlando. You know what I mean? Like if right. he had a, <laughs> it's just like a hand with a rainbow flag. If it had like a white, if it was a white flag, people would be like, what? You know? Right, right. But he had it specifically as a as a rainbow flag, which I think was a purposeful move, personally. Oh, of course. yeah. No, so, of course. I and that's what I'm saying is that, like, you know, it's it's interesting and also, like, kind of heartbreaking, too, that, like, you know, these people can't express themselves in the way that they may mm-hmm. want to, you know? I mean... Right. It's I, Yeah. I think... Um, I don't know how much influence uh, labels and managers have yeah. on like social media accounts. Uh, you know, I wouldn't put it past mm. a manager to be like, "Hey, like this yeah. probably isn't the best idea. We're trying to avoid as much scandal as possible, and they're just wanting to look out for, you know, the yeah. label's best interest." Yeah. Rather no, than exactly. You know, that's more or less what I sort of. I'm assuming to be the case, right. you know, because I think it's kind of, I feel like, especially like nowadays with like, especially things like Instagram stars just kind of go ahead with it and like, they'll take it down if it's an issue, you know, like right. I don't think they need to get it vetted, you know, and whatnot. Right. And especially someone like G dragon who's, right. you know, and you know, like I highly too. doubt that he, after the fact he was like, well, wait a second. I actually don't support this. Like, yeah. you know, um, I could see them just sort of like needing to roll with the punches and whatnot, which yeah. I mean, again, it's like, it's also sad too. I mean, you know, cause on one hand I, I do think they were doing it in a spirit of love and, you know, showing support and showing sympathy and, sh- and, mm-hmm. you know, their own way of grieving. Cause you know, this, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I don't, I live in America obviously, yeah. but I I'm assuming this was something talked about, in other parts of the world, I mean, right. how, how else, how would they know? Right, <laughs> you know? exactly. And yeah. G-Dragon obviously has no uh, familial ties. He's he's not born in America. Right. He has no family in America, I don't right. think. But, um, but yeah, he, I think he know, you know, and, and here's the thing too is that so many, and you know, I know it's not Apple, or it is apples and oranges in the sense that in terms of body counts and whatnot, but so many stars showed their support for Paris, you know, mm-hmm. and when those attacks that happened there, you know, Grant, that was a lot more people mm-hmm. and different, but you know, same organization <laughs> supposedly right. came out, did the same thing. Once again, it was a mm-hmm. hostage situation, but we're not seeing the same support from right, Korean right. stars. Yeah, it's just unfortunate because you don't as much as not, as nice as it is to see them like post things like pray for Orlando. Right. It's not just about the fact mm. that there are 50 dead people. Yeah. It's about the fact that 50 people are dead because they were gay. Or they were in a gay and club. That needs to be acknowledged. Yes. I mean, it. it was a hate crime yeah. you know it, it's not a hate crime to go to you know um or at least uh we had, with paris that was an eagles of death metal concert no one was like this is a hate crime against metal people you know like yeah. it wasn't a or uh, against rock music or mm-hmm. something you know but this was th- right. this is what pe- if, if you were there in this p- space that you know is supporting the gay community and is a place for those people to go and their supporters to go and their allies to go. Yeah. If you attack that, that is an attack on that. Um, I mean, that's the definition of a hate crime, you know, a, an attack on that group. So I think, you know, you can't ignore the fact that this place was, and it, and it was known um, for, you know, being very supportive of the gay community and holding educational seminars. If you guys don't know this, right. it's really kind of cool. Like they had a monthly sort of, just support educational something, you know, because if they really wanted it to be this place of, you know, positivity and whatnot. And, and I think that was not by mistake that this person uh, attacked that place. So, you know, details are still coming in, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, what's going on, of course. Um, so can I ask, yes. do you feel at the end of the day that the fact that they posted it, but then took it down, was still had still had an effect and or do you think like they should not have even tried to do that i think yes i think there there was there it was a moment it was a moment until it wasn't a moment Mm -hmm. but i still think you know this is like what 24 48 hours after the fact i still think 
it made it it made it it made an impact yeah i i I at least look at those three people in particular and be like okay they're they're at least thinking about this in a certain kind of way right um i feel unfortunate i i honestly don't believe they just posted it because they because they were like oh this is cool right i'm gonna post some some rainbows you know like i do think and especially like those three are pretty you know they're certainly not new they're kind of veterans they've been in this world for a while they know kind of how to uh, um, maneuver and yeah or kind of how to filter themselves you know like Eubin's not like posting crazy photos you know every weekend you know like more or less their accounts are pretty clean, pretty, mm-hmm. you know, whatnot. Um, right. They're all very kind of like, they're, they're not like, fu- they're not like, you know, immersed in like scandals. Law. They're, yeah. they're all like very like sensible, level-headed yes, people. Yes, 100%. Yeah, and you know, especially like G-Dragons travels the world, you know, yes. regularly. Right. Um, JYP and artists, they were based in New York for a very long yeah, time. Like exactly. they're all exposed to, you know, different yeah. types of people from all different backgrounds as at 100 percent, yeah if this had been like some a, a younger artist or a new artist or someone who you know probably didn't have those kind of experiences right. i would say okay maybe they just don't know what they're doing right. but you know i think you know and i'm sure like you know pray for orlando hashtag and you know, all those things were like kind of trending on their different social media and whatnot mm-hmm. i think you know it, it was clear to see something was happening you know and, and whatnot and they would have to have picked it up in some kind of way so i i would like to say there was a moment and then it kind of like backtracked but i still think there was something there and you know like there have been signs of progress like in south korea the, the seoul festival i mentioned before they had their mm-hmm. largest turnout ever fifty thousand, on top of um, huge yeah last year they had thirty thousand. you know you have um uh, you know, celebrities that are, you know, not, it doesn't seem like it's, you know, I, I, granted there's no out K-pop stars, but you, you know, have people like Hong Sik Chong, I think is how you pronounce it, you know, who, who came out as gay in 2000 was kind of banned from the industry and Mm -hmm. is kind of now more or less making a comeback for himself on TV and stuff. So I think there's signs of progress. This is just like a little, like, you know, crack in the ice. But I, I think it was a moment. Right. Yeah, and I do think, you know, someone, especially as someone as influential as G-Dragon yeah, in yeah. pop culture, yeah. for him, you know, to ev- to attempt that and then yeah. try to put that message out there right. is, you know, very honorable and, yeah. you know, oh regardless of the reason for him taking it down, yeah. it was it was there in on the interwebs for <laughs> millions I, to see. I still have the screenshot, yeah. you know, like that's yeah. the thing is that, um, yeah, it, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I'm, I'm only hoping that it can kind of spur more discussion and, Absolutely. you know, yeah. no judgments, no, no whatnot. Just mm-hmm. kind of, yeah. Just trying to, you know, wrap our heads around. Yeah. All of this, all and I got so many like cool comments about this piece and whatnot. So I was very kind of yeah, happy everyone, to see. Yeah, everyone, you know, check out the piece if you haven't on yeah. Views.TV. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, totally. Um, let us, us know how you guys are doing, what you guys thought about this issue. Um, we thought about the music, the charts, all of it. Yeah. Then hit us up in any kind of way. You know, hashtag KStop on Twitter. Leave a comment on Views.TV. Leave a comment on iTunes. We see it all. Yeah. We're on Stitcher. We're everywhere. So don't miss us, guys. So yeah. as always, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Yes, this has been Jeff. And this is Tina. Bye. Bye.